The official comes to the center circle. We're ready for championship basketball action. Black River League, Connor Johnston taps it forward, and she tapped it against J.C. Skaggs. It's Bunker. That works with it first. They work left to right as we look at, describe, and video the action for you. Quickly get it down underneath to J.C. Skaggs. They held her to 11 last time, but Skaggs gets the first possession here tonight and powers it in for two, and Bunker strikes first. Bunker going to play a junk defense. They're running a triangle in two. They'll guard Lexi Morris man-to-man, and they're also guarding Cheyenne Burton man-to-man. The three remaining players form a triangle in the lane. And it might be up to the remaining three to see what they can do throughout the ball game. First jumper by the remaining three will not go. Johnston misses the jumper from the right baseline. And there's Skaggs skying high for the rebound. Bunker with a 2 nothing advantage here is Brittany Mathis brings it down the floor to the right wing. That's to Bowen now to the right corner into the hands of Anderson there. Nearly lost it, then regained it, lobs it down underneath. And there's Skaggs going to work again. Too much muscle, too close to the rack here early in this one. And J.C. Skaggs has back-to-back buckets on the first two possessions. Bunker on top, 4 nothing. Now, before we get carried away or anything, Clearwater trailed 16-4 to in the semifinal and then went on to win going away. Here's Connor Johnston down the middle of the lane. Her man-to-man defender lost her that time, and Connor banked it in from six feet out. A 4-2 lead for Bunker. And now here's a reaching foul against Clearwater. That's Cheyenne Burton first. So a fun start to this one in a packed gymnasium here at East Carter, who are just terrific hosts for this Black River League tournament. Bunker basketball. And the Eagles work it into Bowen. Bowen plays to the right wing. That's to Mathis. Mathis plays to the right corner. There's Anderson with it. A lob to Skaggs. Skaggs off the window again. And early on, this girl's unstoppable. Six straight points for her. And Barb Adams says we've got to fix this leaky ship. 6-2 lead for Bunker. Uh, 6.24 remaining on the first quarter clock, and we're back in 30 seconds on J98. Hello, everybody. This is Chad Mills, Athletic Director for Mineral Area College. I'd like to invite you, your family, and friends to join us as we celebrate Cardinal Fever during homecoming on February 21st. Come cheer the Mac Cardinals on to victory against the State Fair Roadrunners. It's all happening at Mac's homecoming. February 21st. We will see you there. J.C. Skaggs, the first six points for Bunker. They're on top six to two. It's a triangle and two being run by this Bunker defense. And Alexi Morris, the leading scorer in the state of Missouri, gets ahead of the circle. Now a lob down underneath intended for Carroll. Carroll works it to Johnston. Johnston, a jumper from the right wing, and that 12-footer sails through. Connor's got the first four points for Clearwater in this one. Just two and it's gone, and the offense is looking pretty sharp here. Brittany Mathis gets it as the trailer as she brings it down the floor on the right wing to the head of the circle, Bowen. She'll back it out. And it looks like a 1-3-1 being run here. No, it looks like a one Flat three and a box on Skaggs now as Morris guarding Skaggs out of the timeout. Jumper won't fall. And then there's a tie-up on the rebound attempt. So an interesting adjustment by Barb Adams running either a diamond or a 1-3 flat and then putting Morris on Skaggs man-to-man. This could be a game of X's and O's of moving chess pieces. Six to four lead for Bunker. Here's Morris, top of the key, one-hander bouncer to the right corner. That's Johnston. Plays it down underneath Carroll's turnaround. Jumper won't go. Skaggs has her third rebound of the game. Skaggs has been tough on the offensive end. And Morris waiting for her as she comes into the lane. Looks like Morris will pick her up once she gets to the lane. And now a lob down underneath for Skaggs. Skaggs and Morris tangled up and they both go tumbling down. And both are slow to give up. Both of them terrific, strong athletes, and they got mixed up right there. The foul goes on Morris. Skaggs tried to go over the top and rip the pass away. That's just two terrific athletes competing for the ball right there. Both of them a little bit shaken, but both of them ready to go. The first foul on Lexi Morris right there, and that may be a key too as well as four-speed Skaggs and see if you can get Morris in foul trouble as Johnston goes up and looked like she had the block on Skaggs. But the officials say got her just on the wrist. Foul goes on Johnston. Johnson had some good height on that vertical and swatted it with the left hand. 
Sends Skaggs to the line. They see an 82% foul shooter on the year. She dips it, flips it, and she hits it. Good look at arc on that one by Skaggs. And it's been all Skaggs for the Eagles here in the first three minutes. She's got seven points in the first three minutes. She's got all the scoring for this team. She's on pace for a 60-point night. Now, we won't let, we know that probably won't happen, but that's the pace anyway. A 7-4 lead for Bunker. Morris brings it down the floor, pushes it to the right wing, Gooch. Gooch over to Johnston. Johnston's outside of the arc trying to force feed Morris. Can't do it. Ball tapped away and then a double dribble that time by the defender, Anderson. Anderson did a great job with the man-to-man, but then dribbled it quickly, glanced around, and dribbled it again. Here's the coach's kid, Brittany Adams, checking in for the Clearwater Tigers, a 5-4 freshman. She'll put it in play. Uh, 7-4 lead for Bunker here. They'll lob out to Johnston. Johnston back cut on an overplay on a defender. And it looks like after she had fouled Skaggs, Skaggs now fouls her. So the foul going against J.C. Skaggs right there. And both Skaggs and Johnston with a foul. First free throw by Johnston won't go. A 50% free throw shooter on the air. She'll have another try. Connor averaging 9.8 points on the season. And she's got the only four for the Tigers. In fact, now she's got the only five. We'll just say it's Skaggs seven and Johnston five. That's the scoring so far with just over four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Out of the circle, there's Bowen. Bowen plays to the right wing. They're going to enter it now. That's to Mead. Mead going back to the basket and tied up by Morris. Morris, such an intense competitor. I've seen good sportsmanship from her in this tournament. Now, she'll knock some people down. She's a rugged player, but I've seen her help some people up along the way as well. Top of the key, there's Bowen. Bowen eyes the three, didn't want it. Pops it to Mathis, deep left corner. And Mathis cuts those cords! Brittany Mathis has been on fire in the last four games, hitting 17 threes. And now she pops another one through, so 18 threes. And now her fourth straight game. And Johnston is hot on the other end. Connor Johnston has all seven for the Tigers. Well, that right wing has been friendly to her. Took her a long time to score in the semifinal win over Van Buren, but she's got the range here tonight. And a 10-7 lead now for Bunker. Bunker basketball, top of the key, Bowen. Bowen looking to the left corner. And another long shot from that left baseline, this time by Anderson that won't fall. Loose ball, and it's taken by Gooch. Gooch on the run, wants to wait for her teammates. Here's Morris. Morris from 25 feet and shot it too long. And a long rebound track down by Skaggs for four. 10 to 7 score. Bunker leads here. Open three for Bowen. Didn't want it. Said, let's work it a little bit. And now she'll be replaced in the right corner by Anderson. Anderson underneath Skaggs. Skaggs over the top of a double team right there. Shot wouldn't fall. Battle for the board. And Morris wins it. Morris will battle you for a lot of things, including rebound. And it's a 10 to 7 lead for Bunker Johnston. Plays it down underneath, and now on a back cut. A good grab that time by Gooch. Gooch going to work it back out to Johnston. Three in the lane. And this triangle in two has been effective to a point. Connor Johnston has found some wide-open looks on that right wing. And she has all seven points here for Clearwater. Five minutes gone in the first quarter. Full court pressure by Clearwater. And let's see how Bunker navigates their way through this one. Successfully, as Alyssa Wisdom is in the ball game now. 5-2 freshman, one of the ball handlers out there. Work it down to the left corner to Mathis. Back up for Wisdom. Wisdom to the free throw line. That's Mead. And kick it out to Mathis. Pump fake on the three. Glides by. Takes it all the way down to the left baseline, but fouled on the floor before the shot. The official comes over to the scorer's table and says that one goes against Brittany Adams. Fourth team fouls on Clearwater. One whistled against Bunker so far. That one went against Skaggs. Wide open three if they want it. Don't want it. That was Ashland Wisdom. And a whistle. And it looks like a foul away from the basketball. And it'll be a little nudge as that one is called on. Cassie Strickland, the 5'5 sophomore. She gets well, a notch in the scoring book anyway, just not for a score. All right, so a 10-7 lead for Bunker here. And here's a free throw line jumper that can make it a one-point game. And good work that time by Halle Gooch as she knocked that one down. A 62% shooter from the field is Gooch on the air. And it's a 10-9 lead for the Bunker Eagles. Bunker really force-fed their star Skaggs early on in this one. 
they've not been able to get it to her in the last two possessions. And now the Tigers give it back. And they threw it right to Adams, right at her face. All she could do was just punch it away so she didn't bloody her nose. And Booker's got the basketball. A buck 55 remaining in the first quarter clock. Bunker basketball here. A bouncer down to the left low block. Nowhere to go with it. Defense in good shape that time, and Meade lifted up the pivot foot. So a traveling violation and a turnover. Bunker going to run Skaggs quickly back in the game, along with Lacey Bowen. A 10-9 lead for Bunker. They're running this triangle and two right here, but not guarding Johnston on the perimeter, and she's made him pay for that with seven early points. And trying to run through the screen right there was Strickland. <laughs> and she has not been in for long, but she's already picked up two personals here. Put it in play. It's Adams. Left of the bucket along the baseline. Adams to Johnston. Johnston right. Elbow extended. Popped it in again. They might have to revise the strategy. As Clearwater, or as Bunkers, obviously said, if Johnston can beat us from the perimeter, we'll take it. But so far, she has. Nine of her team's 11. And it's an 11-10 lead for Clearwater now. And now a drive to the middle of the paint to the left corner, Mathis. Outside of the arc, can she do it again? Not this time. Four players crashed together for the rebound. Bunker tapped it last. And an 11-10 lead for Clearwater here. They're running a triangle and two is Bunker. Guarding Morris and Burton man-to-man. And Johnston's been the one to make them pay. Johnston averaging 9.8 points on the year. Well, she's got nine in the first quarter here in this championship game. We've got a one-point contest. Now here's Morris around the screen, double down, triple team, and turns it loose down to the right corner. Burton skip it back over to the left side. Adams from 15, shot is missed. Rebound fought for. Burton wins it, pops it out high to Goose. Down to the right corner. That's Johnston under a minute to go. 50 seconds remaining. Clearwater lead, Clearwater ball. 11-10 the score. Head of the circle, there's Gooch. And they're all over Lexi Morris trying to deny. Here, and Johnston does it again. Well, we're talking a career night for Johnston. If this keeps up, her pace has slackened, and still she's on pace for 45. 13-10 lead for Clearwater. There's Mathis. She hit a three earlier. She could tie it up if she can do it again. They get it to her left wing. But she gives it up this time, and a lob underneath for Skag. Skag quickly double-teamed. Around that, reverse layup, count it! What a move by Skaggs! She's got nine. The six-footer defeats the double team with some nimble feet and a pretty wraparound bucket. Skip pass. This is the Adams now. Down underneath, that's Morris. Morris fades, rolls it in, and beats the buzzer. Lexi Morris, the 30-point score, has her first point of the game as she beats the buzzer at the end of the first quarter, and Clearwater takes a three-point advantage into the second frame. It's Clearwater 15 and Bunker 12, an exciting championship action at the BRL Tournament in East Carter on K98 The Boot, and we'll tell you more in a minute. Yes, it's cold old January, and the holidays are behind us. What a perfect time to shop for what you didn't get this past holiday. Hi, this is Patsy. Stop by and let the girls and I introduce you to our new inventory of beds, dining rooms, tables, couches, and end tables, entertainment centers, and so much more for all the discounted prices. All bedrooms, 20 to 50% off. That's great savings. Plus, right now, you'll find 12 months no interest. You'll love to shop at Patsy's. Patsy's Furniture in Park Hills. Quality time. We all want more of it, especially with our children. Taking the time to read with your kids is truly quality time. It shows you care. It helps them to want to learn, and chances are they'll love it. Ozark Regional Library is quality time headquarters. Thousands of books and e-books for you and for your kids. If you live in Iron, Crawford, Madison, or St. Genevieve Counties, there's a library close by, and it's all free. Do your kids a favor and make yourself feel great by doing something special for them. Visit an Ozark Regional Library. Books and a whole lot more. A 15-12 lead for the Clearwater Tigers in this championship game at the Black River League Tournament. Bunker running a triangle in two, but one of the players they're not guarding is Johnston, and she's made him pay to the tune of 11 first quarter points. And now, holy mackerel, look what they're doing. They're running three players man-to-man, and they've got two in the lane, and Lexi Morris pumps one in from the left wing. (laughs) <laughs> oh, the chess match continues. I love it. So now instead of running a triangle, we're running tandem players in the lane and three on a man-to-man. 
And Morris beat it with a perimeter jumper from the left wing. It's a 17-12 lead for Clearwater. And they'll back it out with Gooch. Gooch being watched. She's going to slice down the right side of the lane. Skaggs goes high and maybe influence the shot to go too high. Skaggs grabs a hold of the rebound. That's her fifth. And now Bunker trying to push it against some pressure here. Clearwater leads by five. Skaggs got it at the head of the circle. Now she's going to slash down the middle of the lane, gives up her body, and crashes inside. The foul going on. Connor Johnston, her second. That'll put J.C. Skaggs to the free throw line. Uh, Mineral area ladies trailing 58 to 54. And that one at State Fair. You can listen to it on AM 800 if you'd like. J.C. Skaggs pumps through the free throw. And she's got 10 points now on this one. She and Connor Johnston have kind of dueled it out. Connor's got game high honors with 11. Skaggs can tie her here and does so with some good shooting touch as she rolls it through. 17-14. Three-point advantage for Clearwater. And they're going to run two in the lane and then guard three players man-to-man. This is interesting basketball. I love strategic basketball. That's a free-throw line jumper by Gooch. And the Clearwater offense has made him pay for some of that. And Rob Harlow says, we've got to run it, girls. And he's going to try to tweak it some more. 6.40 remaining in the first half. 19-14. Clearwater with its largest lead. Back in half a minute on J98. Ladies and gentlemen, we have breaking news about when we'll have our next edition of Bids for Bargain. Uh-oh. Guess what day it is. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Guess what today is? It's Hump Day. That's right. Our next edition of Bids for Bargains comes your way this Wednesday, Hump Day, at 3.30 on Regional Radio. And you don't need a camel to tell you just how great the savings are. Just listen to the radio and go to MyMoInfo.com. That's Bids for Bargains, Wednesday at 3.30 on Regional Radio and MyMoInfo.com. A fun championship night here at East Carter. I'm Chad Speaker. I'm behind the mic. Aaron Hargis, the man behind the lens tonight, as you can watch all of our action online at J98 Web TV at MimoInfo.com. Bunker basketball, they trail it by five. This is Mathis curling around one defender, and then over the top of another one. Brittany pumps it through from 15 feet. And we've got a one-possession game. 19-16, Clearwater leads. This Bunker defense running tandem players in the lane and three players playing man-to-man defense. Abby Carroll. Plays a get pass over to the right side. If they try to enter it to Morris, it's slapped back out. And that dribbling back up to the top is Gooch. Gooch to the left wing, Carroll. Carroll just inside of the arc, but walked with it. 19-16. The lead to Clearwater, but now the possession to Bunker. Clearwater not putting on that full court presser here as Brittany Mathis comes across the timeline undefended, and she'll push it. Down to that left corner. That's to Anderson. Anderson gets it to Skaggs. Skaggs in and out right back to Mathis. Swing it to the right wing. That's to Ashlyn Wisdom. Back up Mathis and back to the right corner. Anderson just inside of the three-point arc. Her heels were right in front of it, and she pops that one through. She's got her first two, and it's 19-18. What a fun championship game. Some slick shooting in this game by both sides. And now the lob, and Skaggs just... Flew over there and gobbled up that pass on the steal. Skaggs dribbles it across the timeline now. Finds Mathis. Play it underneath now. That's to me. Kick it back outside. Dribbling around one defender. And over the top of another one, Anderson can't hit this one. And Johnston clears the rebound. 5.05 and remaining in the first half. 19-18. Clearwater on top. And these Lady Tigers with a basketball. Head of the circle. That's Gooch. Gooch over to the left wing. Carroll. Carroll way outside of the yard and now throws a diagonal pass to Johnston. Misses the runner. A battle for the rebound and a tie-up situation. Alternate possession goes to Bunker. Well, anytime you run a so-called junk defense, you're giving up something. Bunker has, has given up a perimeter jumper, but then they tweaked that. They were giving up that perimeter jumper to Johnston on the triangle and two. But then they said, well, we'll guard her man-to-man as well. And there hasn't been really anything glaring that they have given up after that. Lexi Morris steals it away, floats it up ahead. Here's Burton, left side layup. Count it. Cheyenne Burton's on the score sheet now with her first two. And 21-18 at the three-point advantage for Clearwater. Bunker basketball. 
play it down to the right side. That's to Wisdom into the right corner to Strickland. And now swing it over to the left side. Wisdom just inside of the arc. Rattled it in and out. Johnson skies high for the rebound. Throws the outlet to Burton. Burton going to wait for her teammates, though. She tippy toes across the timeline. Puts it in the left hand. Tries to get by Wisdom. Can't do it. And now tries it again. A nice job by Ashlyn Wisdom to stay in front and turn the dribbler to Johnston. Johnston driving along that right baseline. Uses the offhand to push off, and that could be key. Because she's been the leading scorer in this game, and she has her third personal now. And an interesting move. Barb Adams going to leave her on the floor here. 21-18. A three-point lead for Clearwater. Running long, that's Mathis. The defense gets back. Good work by Johnston to adjust. Mathis used up the dribble. Skips it high. That's to Meade. And now the ball is loose as they try to dribble it down there to Strickland. And taken back away by Clearwater. Here's Burton coming across the timeline. Burton throws it off of her left hip down to the left wing. Gooch's jumper wouldn't fall. And Skaggs has another rebound, her sixth. She's easily on track for a double-double. She averages a double-double on the year, 21.5 points and 11.5 rebounds. A stat sheet stuffer. The left corner, Strickland. Strickland eyes the jumper, doesn't want it, turns it loose, finds Mathis. Mathis flares it to the head of the circle. That's Bowen. Bowen to the free throw line, Skaggs. Skaggs charges around one defender over the top of a second. Shot is long. Rebound taken down by Morris. Morris floats it up ahead. That's for Gooch. Gooch, head of the circle, 25 feet out. And now bounces it just inside of the right elbow. That's Johnston. They're looking now to Adams. Ball is loose and ripped out of the pack that time by Bunker's Lacey Bowen. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first half. An open jumper for Bowen. Doesn't want it. Instead hands to Strickland in the right corner. Strickland to Mathis. Mathis with the open three. Didn't want that to Bowen. Left side three. She wants it, but missed it. Skaggs has the rebound. Skaggs driving right of the lane, floats it up, misfires, backside rebound. That won't go from Meade, and Morris hauls it in. Good, competitive championship game. This has been fun so far. 21-18, Johnston for three, and missed it. Skaggs soars high for the rebound. Skaggs might have a first half double-double. She's got eight rebounds. To the left corner, this is Cassie Strickland. Teed up the three-pointer, but missed it. That was way long. Backside rebounds down to Morris. And Morris has six rebounds in her own right as Lexi's fouled on the dribble drive try. It's a blocking foul, and it looks like it's going against Strickland. I'll let the officials tell us. And indeed, he says it is, and that's her third. But how about the job they're doing on Lexi Morris? Lexi averages 29.3 points a game, the leading score in the state of Missouri. She has four so far, but she can explode. Anytime, and they lob it to her. Gets to the middle of the lane. Floats one up on the little lean back shot. And now she's got a half a dozen. And the lead is five, matching the largest for Clearwater. A drive by Ashlyn Wisdom. Stops it. Work it back out high to Alyssa Wisdom. Bunker nearly lost. It's saved back into Anderson. Anderson being hounded over there on the defensive side by Burton. She works out of that traffic. Minute and a half to go. 23-18. Five-point advantage for Clearwater. Bunker basketball. The ball's being tapped away and scrapped away, and Gooch has it. Gooch flares it over to Adams. Now to Morris. Morris transition three from 23 feet. Fired it long. And going high for the rebound that time was Lacey Bowen. Someone climbed her back. It's the seventh team foul on Clearwater, and it's the second one on Cheyenne Burton. So we're going to walk down, and it's Lacey Bowen. They'll try the one on one. 73 seconds on the second quarter clock. 23-18. Clearwater leads. Front end of the 101 for Bowen. Missed it. And another rebound by Morris for seven. Clearwater with a five-point lead in the basketball. They lob it down underneath and send it for Adams. Four pass. Went right over her. Taken back away by Bunker. Bunker hustles it up the floor. Ashlyn Wisdom drives it. Hands it off. And that's Anderson. They'll work it around the perimeter to Bowen to the left corner now in the hands of Ashlyn Wisdom. Swing it to the right side to Bowen. They're trying to get this thing rotated side to side, but Skaggs is not in there, so they don't have that player in the paint. That is money, but there's a money ball from the outside. Lacey Bowen rings the bell. Her first triple, and she's chopped a five-point lead down to two. 
Half a minute to go. First half. 23-21. Clearwater leads. But a nice looking shot that time by Bowen. Morris grabs a hold of it. Ball was nearly stolen. She just out muscled it, out hustled it. And Johnston throws a pretty pass to the left low block to Gooch. And Gooch has six points. What a look by Johnston. Leads this team in assist at five point two. And a great pass by her there. And now a drive that time by Samantha Anderson. And she stopped and traveled with it. She should have gone right into the chest of Johnston, who's playing with three personal fouls. If she'd have been able to create some contact, she'd have been able to go to the line and have the fourth on Johnston. Didn't do it. Here's Morris with three, two. And she palmed it. Lexi Morris trying to beat the buzzer. No, there's a foul. It's an off-the-ball foul. I beg your pardon. I thought that they said that she palmed it. But instead, it's the first foul on Hallie Gooch. And so now Bunker will have a chance, perhaps, for the final shot here. They will. It'll be Skaggs. And she has it blocked by Morris. A fun game over the first 16 minutes. And the number one seed, Clearwater, leads the number two seed, Bunker, 25-21. to 21. Well, we had an exciting first half of play. Hopefully we can match it in the second half as Clearwater starts with the lead. And they started with the ball, but they're quickly tied up. As Brittany Adams gets the second half start over Tabby Carroll... She's quickly tied up down in the lane. Now they'll work it to Skaggs. Will Bunker. Skaggs is going to play it over to the right wing to Bowen. Now down to the right baseline. Skaggs around a double team and then around a triple team and powered it through. That's how she started the first step by dominating the paint. And that time she slammed her way over three defenders for her 12th and 13th points of the game. 25 23, just a two point advantage here for Clearwater. Head of the circle, there's Gooch. And Gooch plays it down to Adams, so Adams tied up on the first possession. She traveled on the second possession. And Clearwater giving it back to Bunker on both of those occasions. Bunker could tie or take the lead right here. They hustle it up to Bowen. Down to the right corner, a lob for Skaggs. Skaggs tries to work through a double team. This just tries to tap it out to a teammate, but with the ball on the deck, it's tied up. And it'll go back over to Clearwater. Halle Gooch down there in that wrestling match and forced the alternate possession. Now Gooch will bring it across that center stripe. Hesitates and then throws it off the ankle of Connor Johnston. And so three straight times, Clearwater has given it back to Bunker to start this second half. And Bunker now has another chance to tie or take the lead. Anderson works it over the right wing, gets it right back. They'll run a little dribble weave to Bowen. Bowen swings it over to Mathis. Mathis is three for the lead and got it! Bang! Bang for Brittany Mathis. Her second triple of the game. And this time she puts her team out front. 26 to 25. Bunker leads it. And it's been a 5 nothing push by the Eagles. And now the fourth straight turnover by Clearwater. But then a steal back by Gooch. And she misses the layup. Bunker basketball to the right wing. Bowen, she hit a first half three. Here comes Skaggs on the secondary break with a turnover. As Connor Johnston just playing man to man, jump tie, and just snatched the rebound right out of the, or the steal right out of the air. Here's Gooch on the right wing, and she puts her team back on top. Allie Gooch from 16 feet rolled it through. 27 26. Clearwater by a point. At the free throw line, Skaggs. Skaggs swings to Mathis. Right elbow jumper wouldn't go. Rebound taken by Meade. Meade's stick back won't go. Skaggs has it. Off the window. That won't go. Has it again. Second try will. And J.C. Skaggs now with 15 points and with two rebounds on that possession, she's got her double-double. 15 points, 10 rebounds for J.C. Skaggs. And we toggle back and forth. 28, 27, bunker by a point. A lob underneath, intended for Morris. No chance with Skaggs in the area. Skaggs rose high and ripped it off. So Mathis, Mathis races at the end of the forecourt, nearly lost it out of bounds. Guarded tightly there, holding on to it, and a timeout. By Rob Harlow of Bunker. 28-27, a good game, just got better. 5-16, remaining in the third. Bunker by a point with the ball, and we're back in 30 seconds on J98. Fads come and go, your interests change. But one thing that always stays the same year after year, class rings and school jackets. 
Show your school spirit by wearing a school ring from Jostens Graduation Products. They offer several styles to choose from. Jostens would like to wish all the area schools best of luck in the Black River League Basketball Tournament. From your friends at Jostens Graduation Products, that's Jostens serving all area schools in southeast Missouri. Twenty-eight to twenty-seven, Bunker leading Clearwater in this girls' championship game of the Black River League tournament. At East Carter, and Bunker's got the basketball here. They play it in. Bowen's got it. She'll hand it off to Mathis. Mathis way out front, trying to diagnose this defense. The entry pass stolen away by Burt. Tried to squeeze it in when there wasn't much room. But Burton said, "Thank you." Here's Gooch on the left wing, just inside of the three-point arc. Coming up and looking for a pass is Johnson, but she's guarded man-to-man by Meade. Three players being guarded man-to-man. And two players playing zone in the lane. And there's a foul fighting away through a screen. And that's whistled on Lacey Bowen, her first. 28-27, to 27, a one-point lead for Bunker. Clearwater's got the basketball. The entry pass to Gooch, right baseline jumper. And the 13-footer won't go. Skaggs hauls down the rebound. Man, she got way up for that one. A one-hand a push pass. Finds Mathis. Mathis up the floor. Three and a half assists a game for Brittany. Eight and a half points. She's got eight points already. A hesitation three that time. And Bowen, she just thought about it too long. You got to pull the trigger. Quickly the other way. Here's Gooch outside of the arc. She doesn't want the three. Gooch dribbles back to the head of the circle to the right wing, Johnston. Johnston back to the top of the key. This is Adam. Adam now fires it to the left corner. That's Gooch to the free throw line right back to Adams. Here's Lexi Morris. Tries to go over a double team. And that one returned to sender courtesy of J.C. Skaggs. Morris got the loose ball, sent it back up again, and Bunker comes away. J.C. Skaggs, a tower of power in this one tonight. They lob it to her. Skag just inside of the right low block. Muscled this one up. Couldn't get it to go, though. And still a one-point game. 28-27. Bunker leads. Spin move by Burton. Spun in the lane and walks with the basketball. Tabby Carroll checks in. Adams comes out for Clearwater. And a couple of substitutes here for Bunker as well. Cassie Strickland, Ashlyn Wisdom on the floor. Brittany Mathis coming up the floor. Scored 13 in the semifinal win. Here's a lob to the right low block and a wrap around attempt by Meade that won't go. Got the loose ball. Tabby Carroll grabs the hold of the rebound on the second chance. Clearwater with it, looking for the lead back. Three minutes, 15 seconds. Remaining in the third. Right wing Johnston. She's outside of the arc. Doesn't really like to shoot that three so much. Over to the left side, just inside of the arc is Gooch. And Gooch misses it. Morris has the rebound. But it was Anderson climbing her back. Lexi Morris will have a double-double tonight as well. Well, I mean, she's not there yet, but I'm pretty confident. She's got nine rebounds, but Lexi Morris, who averages 30 a game, has only six points so far in this one. They have done an outstanding job on her. She scored 24 in an earlier meeting this season with Clearwater, or with uh, Bunker. Perimeter jumper that time by Johnston. Every one of those she threw up in the first half fell down, but this time it rims back out. And now here's Mathis with it. Mathis to the left corner, Anderson. Anderson throws it down underneath Strickland, but right behind her, Johnston got big. She didn't want to shoot over the top of that. Now here's Bowen, who banks in a three. She is living well. Ah, Lacey Bowen, her second triple. 31-27. Bunker on top. Two and a half minutes remaining in the third. And Bowen banked it in. And now Clearwater throws it away. Skaggs was out momentarily. She's going to hustle right back in. Two minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the third. A terrific championship game between Clearwater and Bunker. The one and the two seed. Clearwater the one, Bunker the two. Clearwater defeated Bunker earlier this year by nine. But it's Bunker on top here, and there's Johnston, who just picks off a pass, throws it up ahead now, and on the left side, that's Cheyenne Burton with the left side layup. She's money. She hit four of those runners in the semifinal that looked either just like that or were even harder. 
And now here's a scrum for the basketball. And a traveling violation. Interesting call with players scrapping on the floor, but they say that Strickland walked with it. And so after that left-handed hoop by Burton on the left side, we've got a two-point game, 31-29. Clear to tie or take the lead. Johnson looking in for Morris. She's covered up. And then Johnson throws a poor pass, a bullet over the head of Carroll. Carroll had no chance at that one. 31-29. Bunker still with the lead and now with the basketball back. Brittany Mathis bounces it across the timeline. Takes a look at an extended 2-1-2. And as she drove by, Burton just held on to her. The third one on Cheyenne. So they'll take it out along that far sideline. Look to the right corner. And that's where they'll find Mathis. Mathis dribbles it back out. High hands it off to Ashland Wisdom. Right back to Mathis. Right wing. They won't cover her up on the three. So she pulls the trigger. Misses the shot, though. Rebound taken back down by Bunker. And then bounced back up and in by Anderson. Anderson's got four. And Bunker's on the rail by four. 33-29. A minute 20 remaining in the fourth. Johnston drives in over the shot-blocking hand of Skaggs. But sailed it too long. Skaggs didn't block it. But I can guarantee you she changed the tra- trajectory of that one. A minute and five seconds remaining in the third. Skaggs muscles down the middle of the lane, and she's held as she tried to get all the way to the 10. So she'll go to the free throw line for two. The whistle goes on. Tabby Carroll, her first. J.C. Skaggs with 15 points and 11 rebounds. An 82% foul shooter on the year. And that one cuts the cords cleanly. Before that, Skaggs was 2 of 3. Now she's 3 of 4. And 34, 29, Bunker on top. 64 seconds left in the third, and Skaggs rolls this one in. Boy, she gets some good shooters touch on that one. 35, 29. And Bunker building its biggest lead. Less than a minute to go. They're on a basketball. Lexi Morris has been shut down in this game so far as Johnston misses from the right baseline. Rebound off of Skaggs and out of bounds. Johnston scored 11 in the first half, and she has been shut out here in the second half. Only four third-quarter points by Clearwater. Two from Burton and two from Gooch. And Lexi Morris with a goose egg here in the second half. Only Four, six points for Morris in the first half. And they're going to call a hold here against Bunker. This one goes on Cassie Strickland, and that's her fourth. Bunker a little bit deeper than Clearwater. And now the inbounds to Johnston. Missed it. Backside rebound. That's to Morris, and she's got her tenth rebound. And she's fouled and headed to the free throw line if her shot wouldn't fall. The foul goes on Skaggs, and she's been able to, for the most part, stay away from that foul trouble, as that's only her second. 43 ticks remaining in the third. Morris, an 80% foul shooter, splits the strings on that one, and her first second-half point. Lexi Morris with seven. She averages 29.3 on the year. The leading score in the state of Missouri. 35-30, 35-30, Bunker by five. Morris missed the second one, but Johnston has the rebound and the stick back. Her first second half bucket. So Morris and Johnston combined for three on that possession. We've got a three-point game. Skaggs comes up to help break the pressure. Tapped away from her, but she's got it back. Now sends it over to the right wing, and the 15-footer is perfect by Wisdom. Her first bucket, 32-27, or 37-32. I beg your pardon, 20 seconds left. Morris into a double team to Johnston, right baseline, 18-footer, rattles in and out. Skaggs has the rebound, her 12, 10 seconds remaining, third quarter in the backcourt. This is Mathis, double team, has nowhere to go. Will Harlow call a timeout? No, it's to Skaggs with four, three. Skaggs just inside of the three-point arc, and the buzzer, and she just knocked the bottom out of it. J.C. Skaggs beats the buzzer. She's got 19. And for this Bunker Ball Club, they'll go to the fourth with a seven-point lead. Bunker, 39. Top seeded Clearwater, 32. Eight minutes of regulation left. We're back in a minute on J98. When it comes to your health, you choose a physician you can rely on and trust. 
you should give equal care in choosing a pharmacy. Brown's Pharmacy in Ellington has been serving the area for over 30 years with trust and reliability. Brown's Pharmacy will fill your prescriptions accurately and professionally with computerized prescription services, competitive prices, and professional guidance. Bring your prescriptions to Tim and Leanne Brown at Brown's Pharmacy in Ellington. Are you looking for a bank with not only convenient services, but friendly people to help you with your banking needs? Well, look no further. People's Community Bank is your full-service banking facility with 14 locations to serve you. People's Community Bank is a modern banking facility with the fast, friendly, and professional service that you deserve. People's Community Bank serving you with 14 locations, including Ellington Bunker and newly opened Annapolis branches, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Thriller at State Fair in the Mineral Area. The Lady Cardinals go down to the Roadrunners, 75-72. Great game, but Roadrunners just outlasting the Lady Cards, 75-72 on KRI tonight. Just the second loss of the year for the Mac Ladies. Mac men coming up next on AM800. Right here in the BRL Championship, we've got the Bunker Eagles leading the top seed of Clearwater Ball Club, 39-32. Bunker starts the fourth with the basketball. They missed the jumper on the left wing, and I don't know how she did it, but J.C. Skaggs caught the ball as she was going down, and in fact, as her body was twisting to the floor, she managed to get off the shot, but they're going to say, no, it wasn't on the shot. <laughs> but it was her 13th rebound, and the first foul against Morris. They're going to call an illegal screen as Skaggs popped free on the inbound play, and the foul goes on Meade. It was a good-looking play, and now we know why. It's like when you get that long run in football. Great blocking, and now we know why, because it was holding. Half a minute gone to the fourth, 39-32. Bunker with its largest lead, seven points. That was the score at the end of the third. Skaggs gambled, went for the steal, and it went right by her. But the good news first, she never touched it. And then it bounced out of bounds. Bunker's got it back. The third quarter started with four straight Clearwater turnovers. And that's when Bunker kind of took charge of this thing. Now, not major charge. They're still only up by seven, but they trailed by four at the break. So it's been an 11-point swing. And now down to the right corner. Anderson for Bunker. Gags guarded by Morris, and that's on the straight man-to-man. Now the ball is loose, and it's taken away by Gooch. She's racing up the floor. Right-sided layup would fall, and a blocking foul going against Bunker's Mathis. I think Mathis basically did all she could to get into position. There just wasn't quite enough time. And you've got to credit Gooch with getting that steal in and then just attacking a breakneck face down the right side of the floor. So Gooch goes to the free throw line where she's 8 of 10 on the season. And it's the old jinx as she misses that one. So the 80% foul shooter throws it short. One minute gone on the fourth. I mean, seven minutes of regulation left. The girls' championship game, BRL tournament. Second free throw missed as well. Morris has the rebound, couldn't finish it. But she's going to the free throw line. Gooch missed them both. And now Morris with a chance to shot. Bunker already in the bonus as Clearwater has committed seven fouls. But Clearwater is far from the bonus as Morris rolls through that free throw as Bunker is only... No, I got it. I got it wrong. It was opposite. Bunker has a seventeen fouls. Clearwater with only three team fouls. So it was opposite there. As Morris tickles the twine, and she's got point number nine, but she averages thirty. So you can put that victory in the column of the Bunker Eagle. Underhand a scoop. This is Mathis head of the circle. Left wing three by Bowen. Rattled it in and out. Johnston cleared the rebound. She hands it to Morris. Morris sometimes will shift to that point guard position late in game because they want the ball in her hands. And that time, Carroll slid right in front of her and got whistled for the block. And that'll send Lexi back to the free throw line. That'll be a one and one for her now. If she's going to match her scoring average, she's got to score 21 points in the final 638. She just meant to miss the front end of the one and one. And that was the 14th rebound of the game for Skagg. What a game for Skaggs. 19 points, 14 rebounds for. It's like a Jordan Ingram type game. 
And now Bunker's got it. Out of the circle. This is Mathis. Mathis hands it off to Skaggs now. Skaggs coming outside. Wants to take Morris off the bounce. JC attacks. Goes to the left hand. High off the window. What a move by her. She hit the shot. But they're going to call a foul before the shot on the floor by Morris. I think that's a pretty smart play. Send Skaggs out there. See if you can entice Morris into a foul. And that's her third. Only the fourth team foul, though, on Clearwater. Racing over to grab it off the inbound. It's Ashlyn Wisdom. The head of the circle, Mathis. And now they'll bring Skaggs out again. She shoots a 17-footer, and it goes. But at three seconds in the length, Skaggs did everything she could on the last two possessions. Finishes the runner in the WNBA. It would have been an end one. And then drills a 17-footer, but somebody's in the lane. 6.05 remaining in the fourth. Right wing, Adams for Clearwater. Morris trying to work for some space inside. They have her double team. Now just inside of the free throw line, that's Gooch. Finds Morris, turns around, shoots it over three defenders, and rattles it home. Lexi's got 11. And we've got a one-possession ball game. 39-36, bunker lead. Gags has it out along the perimeter here. Trying to pull Morris out away from the basket. A drive by Mathis over to the left corner. 18 footer won't go for Bowen. And now a tie-up on the rebound attempt by both teams. Clearwater has it. Now, there's a trade-off to everything you do. Like I said earlier, you bring Skaggs out, you pull Morris away from the basket. The trade-off is if somebody else shoots the perimeter jumper, Skaggs isn't there to rebound it. Timeout now, 534, remaining in the fourth. 39, 36, Bunker leads Clearwater. Tell you more in 30 seconds on J98. It's tax refund time. Right now at America's Mattress and Recliners in Farmington, you'll save up to 60% off floor samples and clearance models. Sort a twin mattress for just $85. Queen mattress for just $199. Or how about just $299 for a king? Plus get free delivery, free removal, free setup, and special financing up to 60 months. Get the sleep you need with your tax refund. It's guaranteed at America's Mattress and Recliners on Walmart Drive in Farmington. Clearwater's looking to maybe tie this up. Maybe make it a one-point game here. And now on the right wing, Adams drives it, goes to the right elbow. Gooch misses the jumper, and there's another rebound by Skaggs for 15. Five minutes, ten seconds on this fourth quarter clock. Bunker leads, 39-36. J.C. Skaggs dribbling it out along the perimeter. But in a scoop, that's Mathis at half court. Mathis blows by one defender. Now a dribble weave handoff to Ashland and Wisdom. Going to work down underneath. What a move by KC Mead. Her first score of the game. Took her player off the bounce. Held her on her hip. Went to the left hand and bounced it off the window from five feet out. Left quarter. This is Gooch from 17. Wouldn't go. Morris grabs it. Scores it. She's got 13. And it's back to a three-point game again. 41-38. Skaggs comes over to help break the pressure. She bounces it across that timeline. Here she comes. She's going to attack Johnston. And the foul going on, Johnston. That's her fourth. She has managed to play the entire second half and about the three, three or four minutes remaining in the first half with the three personal. Skaggs put her squarely in her crosshairs that time and drove strong to the hole. J.C. looking for a 2010 game tonight, and she just did it. 20 points for J.C. Skaggs. She's got 15 rebounds. 42-38. She's made it a two-possession game. Bunker leads it. Four and a half minutes to go. Skaggs back to the strike. Puts it in her right hand. Blackjack. She's got 21. What a game for J.C. Skaggs. Well, I say what a game. What an average game for J.C. Skaggs. She averages 21 points a game. 43-38, a five-point lead for Bunker. To the left wing, Gooch. Maybe a little gun shy. She's missed a couple of jumpers here in the last few minutes. Now to the right wing, that's Adams. Adams finds Morris. Morris, turnaround jumper, a fade from 12. Missed it. The rebound, fought for, taken by Skaggs again. Number 16 for She might be working on the 2020 night. 43-38 and a timeout by Rob Arlo for the Bunker, Lady Eagles. 3.58 3.58 remaining in the fourth. 43, 30E, 38. Bunker leading Clearwater. And I'll tell you more after this one-minute pause on the boot. 
If you have a loved one that can no longer care for themselves, it can be a very stressful time. Patricia's Townhouse and Patricia's Residential offers facilities that meet all standards. When you choose Patricia's Townhouse and Patricia's Residential Care, located in the heart of Annapolis, we offer a relaxed atmosphere with planned activities, 24-hour care, home-cooked meals, an on-call RN, and much more. Patricia's Townhouse and Residential Care in Annapolis, the next best thing to home. Contact John Alcorn at 573-598-1168 for a personal tour today. Jim Skaggs, presiding commissioner of Iron County, is a proud supporter of our community and our area athletes. Jim takes this time to wish the best of luck to the South Iron basketball players and all student athletes participating in the MAAA tournament. Play hard and remember, teamwork is the tool to a winning game. This message brought to you by Jim Skaggs, presiding commissioner of Iron County. Black River League Tournament Championship game where Bunker leads Clearwater 43-38. Bunker's got the basketball as we return from the timeout and a quick travel. Listen against the Eagles. This is the type of game that Rob Harlow feels like if they win, it could be a breakthrough for his team. Win that close one against a quality opponent. Clearwater 10-5 and and beat Bunker earlier this year by 9. Clearwater's got it. This is Gooch. Did she palm it? She did. The dueling turnovers right there. 43-38. Five-point advantage for Bunker. Bunker ball and a poor pass that time. And now a loose ball far sideline. Bunker touched it last. Morris and Skaggs crashing together forward on the far sideline. And a nice job by Lexi helping Skaggs off the floor. They've been tangled up a couple of times tonight. Nothing untoward, just two players hustling after the basketball. 3.20 remaining in the fourth quarter. This is Johnston over the top of a defender from 12. Missed it. Backside rebound, hauled in by Gooch. Now shoots it from the left baseline. 10-footer wouldn't go for her. Battle for the rebound. Skaggs hits the deck again. Going to have to give her a standing eight count before it's all over tonight. Goes off of her and out of bounds. 3.13. Remaining in the fourth. Five-point lead for Bunker. Johnston gets it. Fires over the top. Wouldn't go. Morris has the rebound. Puts it back in. Lexi Morris has 15 points and 12 rebounds. Here comes Skaggs. Skaggs going against Johnston and just fouled her out. Smart play by Skaggs. Create the contact and leave it up to the official. Johnston played a wonderful first half with 11. In fact, she had nine first quarter points, but she fouls out having scored only four additional and 13 for the night. And her last two fouls have been the result of J.C. Skaggs going right after her. Skaggs to the stripe, an 82% marksman on the year. She's six of seven tonight, so right on that season's average. She has played such a huge game for this team and rattles that one in. The double deuce for J.C. Skaggs. She's got 22 and tack on 16 rebounds. She's made it a two-possession game again, 44-40, bunker on top. Skaggs back to the stripe. Not in the nylon. J.C. Skaggs has 23. She's outdueling Morris. But Morris with a quality game in her own right, 15 and 12. Two minutes and 52 seconds remaining in our fourth quarter. Left baseline jumper, Carroll didn't want it. Instead, plays to Gooch. Back to Carroll. Doesn't want it again. Back to Gooch. Right to elbow. That's Adam. Back to Gooch. Third time she's touched it there. Missed it short. Rebound taken down by Mathis and fouled. And now the Eagles will be to the line every time they're fouled. That was the seventh team foul against Clearwater. Still plenty of time for Clearwater. Just a five-point lead. Morris can hit three after three when she gets hot. She hasn't hit a three all night tonight, though. She's had a shadow or two everywhere she goes. That was the second foul on Gooch, by the way. And the free throw drilled by Brittany Mathis. Mathis has nine points just above her 8.6 average. And 46-40 the score. 
The largest lead for Bunker has been seven. And they can't duplicate it there as Skaggs goes over the back. So the free throw missed that time by Mathis. And we'll walk the other way and Morris will shoot. Now Mathis trying to hustle, certainly. That's her third personal, though. And really the last thing you want to do is stop that clock if you're Bunker and give Clearwater a chance for points, especially with their best shooter at the line, Lexi Morris. Morris missed it, though. She misses the front end of the one-on-one. The rebound taken by Mead. Mead's in the backcourt, over to Skaggs. Two and a half minutes remaining. Head of the circle. There's Mathis, swings it to the right side. How about this three? <laughs> Ashlyn Wisdom, with no reason to shoot right there, drills the three. 49-40. And Bunker trying to take a death grip on this title game. But Morris trying to will her team to stay in it here. Headed to the free throw line. Wisdom, just the freshman. You have a chance to work clock there with nobody around that says, nuts to that, I'm hitting the three. Morris sinks the first free throw. She's got 16. <laughs> Looking for point number 17. Missed it. And Skaggs has the rebound, her 17th of the night. The lead is eight. 49 to 41. And you would think that Bunker or that Clearwater is going to have to start fouling here almost every time down the floor. And they fouled this time, but not out of design. Rather, it was Casey Mead continuing to attack the rack and a blocking call against Adam. And so Mead's going to the stripe. I think they called this one on the floor, though. So Casey, with only a one on one, and she's a 50% foul shooter on the year. Here's the first. She's got it to go. Well, this bunker team just hasn't blinked tonight. 50 to 41. Time out on the floor. Bunker by nine. A minute 59 remaining in the fourth. And we're back at East Carter in the BRL Tournament Championship in 30 seconds for the boot. At First Midwest Bank of the Ozarks, you'll find all the products and services available at larger banks, but with the benefit of local decisions that only an independent community bank can offer. First Midwest Bank of the Ozarks offers the best in loans, savings, and checking accounts, IRAs, night deposit, drive-up windows, and much more. With locations in Piedmont, Van Buren, Greenville, and Williamsville, First Midwest Bank of the Ozarks lobby is open 8.30 to 3, Monday through Thursday, Friday 8.30 to 6, and 8.30 to noon on Saturday. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. There are occasions when perhaps someone is leading a good team and they say, let's work clock. We'll try to salt this away. And sometimes that backfires. If you try to stop doing what's gotten you to that point. Well, Bunker has not stopped attacking even when they had a chance to work clock. And it's been effective for them. So give Rob Harlow and his team credit for not changing and not working clock because they've outplayed Clearwater to this point, and they said let's continue to do what's working. At the free throw line is Casey Mead. She could give her team its first double-digit lead of the night, but she doesn't do it there as this free throw rolls in and out. Morris has the rebound, her 13. Quick trigger by Morris on the three, and transition rattled it home! 19 points for Lexi Morris. We've got a six-point contest. Bunker leads 50 to 44. Skaggs up the floor. Attacks from the left low block. And another blocking foul, this time on Adam. Skaggs is so powerful down in the paint. But yes, yeah, she's got also an impressive floor game. In the fourth quarter, she's done a great job of attacking off the bounce, particularly driving the left side of that lane and then getting to the free throw line. Skaggs has 23 points and 17 rebounds. Now she has 24 points to match the number on her back. Terrific performance tonight by J.C. Skaggs. Another one for Skaggs. Throws it up. Throws it in. 25. 25 and 17 for J.C. Skaggs. Morris calls for the basketball. 
Clearwater trails by eight. Creates some contact with Skaggs. That's what Skaggs has been doing to Clearwater, and Morris turned the tables on her that time. So Morris going to the free throw line, and that is the fourth personal foul. No, beg your pardon, just the third on J.C. Skaggs. No, it is the fourth. And another 20-point game for Lexi Morris as she cuts the courts cleanly there. So Skaggs does have her fourth, and Morris hits both free throws. She's got 21. She's tracking down Skaggs for game-high honors, and then a hold by Burton. And over this final minute and a half, we can see a whole lot of free throws. That'll give me a chance to thank a few sponsors. I'd like to thank the Van Buren, the, these school districts supporting our broadcast of the Black River League Tournament, and we thank them for doing so. The Van Buren Schools, the Lesterville Schools, the Bunker Schools, the South Iron Schools, the Clearwater School. Thank you for supporting our coverage of the Black River League Tournament. The free throw missed that time by Mathis, but she hits the second, and she's in double figures now at 10. The margin is 7, 53-46. And Lexi Moore gives it up, which I didn't think she'd do. But she gives it back, and then she walks, but she's tied up. And Moore is barking at the official, saying that they held my arm. 53-46, seven-point lead for Bunker. Bunker basketball. Are we going to see some more fouling? I would think so, but Meade throws it to midcourt, and now a foul, and Mappet will go to the line. And the whistle goes on Morris. And that is her four. So the two leading scores with four personal fouls apiece. Skaggs for Bunker, Morris for Clearwater. And Mathis is back to the free throw line. She just went one for two, and she misses this one. A 74% foul shooter, so very good foul shooter on the year. But only two of five tonight so far. Bunker by seven, a minute 20 remaining. Second free throw perfect by Mathis. They all count. 11 points for Mathis, and here comes Morris. Morris driving right side of the lane, a blocking foul. She'll go back to the line, and both teams shooting two-shot fouls now. Whistle goes on Anderson, and to Morris's credit, she's been able to get to the line here, even though if you're bunker, and you don't just want to give up layups, but you certainly don't want to be fouling and stopping the clock and putting Morris to the line, and Lexi now has 22. Six first half points for Lexi Morris. He thought there's no way she'll get to her average. Well, she just might. She's got 23 now. Average is 29.3 on the year. And they inbound to Brittany Mathis, quickly fouled by Tabby Carroll. So they're going to march Mathis back to the free throw line. And Mathis three for six tonight from there. Now, if Bunker makes their free throws, they should be in good shape. We all know the story of that as we've seen basketball games. So, and Mathis sinks the first. She's got 12, and the lead is 7, 55 to 48. And she got them both. 13 points for Brittany Mathis. 56, 48. An eight-point lead for Bunker. 74 seconds left, and we're back in a minute on J98. Missouri Highlands Healthcare. Healthcare you can feel good about. Hi, I'm Samantha Hill with Missouri Highlands. Our clinics are committed to meeting the primary and preventative care needs of the residents of Carter, Reynolds, Shannon, Iron, Ripley, Butler, and Wayne Counties. At Missouri Highlands, we serve patients regardless of insurance status, and with our sliding fee scale, your costs are based solely upon your ability to pay. High-quality, affordable health care is available, and it's right here at Missouri Highlands. Visit mohi.org for a clinic near you. The Bunker R3 Board of Education, the administration, the teachers, the staff, the parents, and the students take this opportunity to congratulate everyone, the players, and the coaches of Bunker Schools. Bunker R3 School District, proud of the area youth, and they would like to wish the Bunker Eagles the best of luck during the Black River Tournament. Good luck and keep up the hard work from everyone from the Bunker R3 School District. Fifty-six to forty-eight, Bunker leading Clearwater, the two seed leading the one seed. 
here in the finals of the BRL tournament. This is Lexi Morris with a Euro step three that will not fall. And another rebound by J.C. Skaggs. That is number 18 for her. And a quick foul going against Clearwater. Skaggs going to come down and shoot some more. 63 seconds left. Third foul on Gooch right there. And Skaggs has already 25 points tonight. And as she throws this one up, she's got 26. Skaggs had only 11 in a previous meeting this year with Clearwater. Clearwater won that game by nine. Skaggs' second free throw on the money. She's got 27. That only tells you part of the story. The rebounding, the other part, 18 rebounds for her tonight. 58-48, it's a double-digit margin. And now on the right side, good shot by Adams and a great assist by Carroll. The lead's back to eight now at 58-50. to 50. Really nice passing by Clearwater right there to create that scoring chance. And it'll be Brittany Mathis at the free throw line now. Mathis missed a few, but she's made her last few, and she rattles that one home. 14 points for Brittany Mathis now. 59-50, and she got that one to go 15 for Mathis. 60-50, 50, 52 seconds left in regulation. The inbounds to Carroll. Carroll on the right wing, head of the circle. This is Gooch, and Lexi Morris just fouled out of the game. She used a little forearm as the defense was riding her down the floor, and she is now done having scored 23 points and collected 13 rebounds. They held Morris to only six first half points. She helped to bring him back and keep him in it in the second half, but her night is now done. And Skaggs is fouled on her way up the floor. I think held by Carroll, the third against Tabby. JC, JC Skaggs has a chance to finish this game with 30 points and 20 rebounds. Now, she'll have to do a few more things, but she's closing in on both those marks as that free throw is perfect, and she's got 28 points and 18 rebounds. What an effort by J.C. Skaggs tonight. Back to the stripe, misses this one. The rebound, though, goes to Bunker, and the stick back, although didn't go down by Casey Mead, she fouled, and she'll go to the line. Whistle goes on Brittany Adams. It is the largest lead of the game for either side as Bunker leads 61 to 50. And 45 seconds left. Bunker only 8 and 9 on the year. They played a tough schedule. And one of those losses to Clearwater. Free throw is in by Mead. She's got four points. Timeout. 45 seconds left. 62 50. Bunker with its largest advantage and looking for the title here at the BRL tournament in East Carter. Tell you more in 30 seconds on J98. The Van Buren School District would like to take this opportunity to wish the best of luck to all the players in the Black River League Basketball Tournament. The Van Buren School District knows that it takes a lot of time, dedication, and hard work to be a winning team. You have shown you have what it takes to succeed, and the Van Buren School District says good luck to all the players in the Black River League basketball tournament. Well, smiles all around by the Bunker players. They can feel this one. A tournament championship coming their way. They lead by 12, 62 to 50, with 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter over Clearwater. The number two seed leading the number one seed. Casey Mead at the line. For the Eagles, she misses this free throw. And it looked like she missed iron as well. And so it'll be Clearwater basketball. They put it in play, looking for Burton. Cheyenne's got it. Cheyenne pulls up for a long three-point try, and she missed everything as well. Airmailed that one out of bounds. 62-50. to 50. 
A 12-point lead for Bunker. Largest lead of the game for the Lady Eagle. Mathis out. Bowen in. Tremendous effort by these Lady Eagles here in this one. They swing it, and they throw it up the floor. This is Skaggs. Throws it up ahead. It's layup and uncontested to Samantha Anderson. He can tack another assist on to Skaggs' line now. 64-50 Bunker is going to win this one. Really almost kind of going away now. A drive down the left side of the lane. A scoop shot by Burton. Kind of out of control. And Burton goes to the free throw line. She was fouled. Kind of got bailed out on that one. Anderson fouled her. Third foul on Anderson. And Burton going to the free throw line. The freshman. She averages nine points a game. She's got four here. Misses the first. A 50% free throw shooter on the season. Shoots 50%. In fact, from the field as well. And she also misses that one. And Skaggs collects her 19th rebound of the game. 14 seconds left. And Bunker continues to score. This one goes down for Anderson. She's got eight. Five, four, three-pointer by Gooch. That one won't go. Two, one second left as the clock is stopped. And all Bunker has to do is inbound it. And they will be tournament champions. 66 to 50. Bunker will hold its largest margin as the final score. The Bunker Lady Eagles with hugs all around. They're the BRL tournament champion in 2015 as the number two seed knocks off the number one and avenges a loss from earlier in the season. 